Do you want to win up to a thousand dollars? Well, you can with the 2024 Real Illusion 3D Character Contest. And I just want to say thank you very much to Real Illusion for actually sponsoring this video. As you can see from my channel, I am a massive fan of what these guys do. And in celebration of this, I'm going to be showing you how to create your very own stylized 3D pop star. We're going to be using Character Creator, Blender, and finalizing everything in Unreal Engine to bring our character to life. I'm also going to be using software that I have not used previously and I'm going to show you the entire workflow from start to completion. First stop, character creation. So this is Camilla, she comes default in character creator so you can just drag her out into the project. You can then go to the modifier panel over on the right hand side and use the sliders just to change the facial proportions. Now the beauty of this method is that you don't have to do any skinning, any weighting or any rigging or any UVW unwrapping. It's sort of all done for you already. So it's a quick start way to get your character going. I'm now going to be bringing this character into Blender for further sculpting. The best way to export your character in and out of Blender from Character Creator is to use the absolutely free Blender pipeline. Download it from the link in my description. This plugin allows you to bring in your character creator character into Blender with a click of a button. Some cool features of this is that you can convert your character again in one click of a button to a rigify rig. You can also import the lighting system from character creator into Blender and it will convert it to Blender compatible lighting system and you can switch between all the scene lighting which gives you a head start on setting up your light rig. So I can just hop into Blender and I can see from my tools if you hit N on the keyboard that will bring up your tools tabs and this is where the CC pipeline lives. This is where you can easily import your character. So I just click on the import button and that brings my character with all its textures into Blender. Select your character and go to object mode and select sculpt and then you'll see all your sculpting tools and you're now ready to sculpt on your character. When I'm sculpting I work on the larger areas and then I refine the details. So I'm trying to keep this character's features sharp as this is a stylized character. So I use a lot of the draw brush and the define sharp brush as well as the flatten brush as well. Once I'm happy with the sculpt I just go over to the CC pipeline dialog and click on the export to character creator button and then I go back into character creator and then go into plugins blender pipeline and then go into import character from blender and just load that fbx file back in. We'll just go through the exact same process again for the body. I like to do the head first and then do the body. So just go through the more sliders and adjust them until you've got your character's shape the way you want it. Now you can then import it back into Blender to sculpt it further if you want to. Okay, so we're now gonna move on to painting our texture onto our character's face and body. And for this, I'm gonna try out a free plugin from Gumroad called Has Paint Layers that apparently is gonna help me manage my paint layers a lot better in Blender a little bit like Photoshop layers and again I'm just going to do a quick overview so you can see the product in action. So once you've installed paint layers you just hit N on the keyboard or go to the tools palette and you'll see it there as a tab called paint layers and I want to work first on her face UVW map so what you need to do is select your character and then hit the material tab and then select the head UVW. I'm going to click on the setup material button and then click create new layer option and and then from here I'm just going to find the diffuse head which is my UVW map. Yours will be the same if you're using character creator as well and then I'll press this downward arrow button which will then bring it into my layer and I've created a new layer here. The solid square here means that that layer is selected. I just go to the texture paint tab at the top so just fill this layer with just a basic skin color and then I can go in and then paint on top of that texture as you normally would wood in Blender. You can paint on the UVW map on the left or you can paint on the 3D character on the right directly. See from this drop down menu you've got different blending options so you can switch between these as well as you're working on. So very similar to Photoshop in that, that respect. You can also change the opacity of each layer. I'm just going to fast forward here but hopefully this gives you an understanding of what this plugin could add to your workflow. 
you want to switch to the body or the arms or the legs you just need to switch UVW maps just by selecting on the character and going to the material slot again and just selecting the body UVW map in this instance and then you can then create a new material in the paint layers and then start painting the layers on there. I then did the same to switch to the IUVW map and just created a new material in the paint layers and then just used the base layer as a guide so I could just paint roughly around the eye and just make it a little bit more cartoonish. Once you've finished with painting your textures you can just click the export texture button to export each UVW map out separately so we can then export it into character creator. Within the characters material tab in character creator I just load back in each UVW map. You can see here I've brought in the eye within the eye parameter I just make a couple of adjustments like to the pupil scale here just to make it larger and then I increase the limber scale as well which is the dark circle around the eye at this point I can actually go back and change the shape of the face or anything on this character if I look back in hindsight and I think there's something wrong with the character and somebody says can you change that it's just a matter of changing it you're not going to break anything whatsoever so we're now going to be moving on to creating the stylized hair for our 3D character. Now if you're not interested in making hair and learning how to do it you can actually buy pre-made hair. A great place to purchase hair assets is from the Real Illusion marketplace where it just downloads directly into your content library and you just drag it onto your character. But today in this video I'm going to be trying out a plugin for Blender that will help us create stylized hair fast. This plugin for Blender is called Stylized Hair Pro and I'm going to give you a quick overview on how to use it. First you want to select your character and then separate using the lasso tool the hair or the scalp of the character. So this is the area we're going to be generating the hair from. We then add a hair curve to the mesh with this button up here and then we then just sort of brush it into shape and then once we're happy with that you can then convert that into a stylized hair setup. From here as I work down the UI panel everything is arranged in specific order of functions. So first you create the hair then add stylization thickness and then you can add curls, braids and twists and finally apply the material to the hair. This makes the process are so straightforward and easy to follow. You can actually do all of this with the geometry nodes but what you're paying for is an organized systematic UI that will speed up your workflow and just make it a lot more enjoyable to create stylized hair. Once you've finished creating your hairstyles you then convert the curves to mesh and export that out as an FBX file and then we're going to jump back into character creator and import that new hair. So once again I go to the top menu click create click on accessory and then import the hair FBX and then position it into the viewport on top of the character. Once I'm happy with the position of the hair on the character's head I then go to the modifier panel and click on create hair. From there I just select base all and as always once I've added something onto the character I always put it through a default motion cycle so you can access that through the motion button at the bottom and just do a walkthrough cycle or a dance cycle just to check that the hair is not intercepting the mesh or doing anything it should not be. If you find the hair is doing something that it shouldn't be you can always go in and manually adjust the hair weighting yourself. At this point I realized my character does not have any face tattoos so I throw her back into Blender, add a few more details using the paint layers tool and then bring her back into character creator just using the Blender pipeline. So you can go back and forth and do iterations on your character and it won't mess up the face. So now we're going to move on to making clothes for our 3D character. If you want to quickly deck your character out in the latest strip, you can quickly add clothes to your character from the Real Illusion Marketplace. If you want to create bespoke custom pieces, there are the high ticket price programs like Marvelous Designer and Clove 3D. They can be quite expensive, so the subscription costs about $40 a month. Now depending on your project and your budget, that might be worth your investment. Now if that's not suitable for you because of the budget, well I wanted to show you a new piece of software. Well it's actually not new whatsoever, but it's new to me. It's called Style 3D by Artilia. It's been around for quite a while and it's got a very 
similar interface to Clo 3 d as well as Marvelous Designer. So if you're from a pattern making background with 3D clothing, you'll take to this like a duck to a water. Now with Style 3D, you work in the 2D and 3D panel, so you have a split screen and you can design your patterns on the left hand side of the UI here and you can stitch them together. You can also work in real time on the 3D screen as well. You can simulate your patterns which will stitch your clothing together and allow you to move the clothing around and simulate wrinkles and elasticity and all those fun things. Now I found the easiest method was to actually go to the Style 3D Marketplace which is built into the software package and just download a couple of pieces of items. You can get basic items as well to use as a template and then you can edit the clothing from that point. So you're not actually starting from scratch, you're starting from a base template and it just makes the process a lot quicker and a lot more fun. I just want to add, I'm actually using the trial version. It's a three months full functionality trial version of the software so you can export the clothes and try them out. Now once I was happy with the design I just exported each piece of garment out individually as an SBX, went to character creator and did what I did before, go to create accessories and then import the clothing. To stick the clothing to the character I just clicked on the transfer weight button which will transfer the weight to your skeletal mesh. Uh, just selected the default which is just generally an overall good setting for any piece of clothing. As you can see there's more niche settings for like things like shoes and gloves and dresses and cloaks and stuff like that. So depending on what kind of garment you're adding on you can use these quick weighting default presets. I just add the material to the garments and then just run it through a default motion animation just to check that the weighting's okay. It's not perfect but uh, we're not going for perfection here, we're going for done. Next I wanted to add motion capture to my character and I wanted to try out Move AI. More specifically Move AI 1 which actually just means you just need one iPhone to capture your movement. There is also Move AI Pro which uses multiple cameras which will give you a better output. Once you've downloaded the app, you can quickly set your phone up. You can just pop it up. You can then select the duration of your animations. Once you hit record, it will start the timer so you can get into the position, which is an A pose in the green man template that's shown on the screen. It will then count down and record the duration that you've selected. You then get a preview of your mocap animation. If you click on share, you can then save your mocap off as an FBX file or a blend file for taking into Blender. I'm just going to save mine as an FBX file and click download FBX. I'm going to save that to my PC via OneDrive. I just go back into character creator and then from here open up the downloads folder and literally drag the file, the move AI file onto your character. From this point you'll get a screen with a motion profile and if you just click on the file next to it I have this file here. You will need to download this file. The link is in my description. This is a retarget file and we'll retarget the Move AI skeleton to your character creator skeleton. Basically, it just means that they're compatible and you can use the animation. Once you've done that, you come down and just press convert all. And as you can see, it actually works quite beautifully. Now, my character does look like she has had too much caffeine and she's jittering all over the place. So next, we're going to fix this. This is called mocap cleanup. Now, we've got two options. You can either take this into Blender and I'll show you how to do that. Or you can take it into iClone and that is a paid for additional product but it has many many features that Blender doesn't especially when it comes to facial animation. It is worth its weight in gold but obviously if you don't have the budget please use Blender for mocap cleanup and to do that I'll just show you quickly how to export to Blender. Simply go to file export FBX clove character from the target tool preset select Blender and the FBX options mesh and motion and then you want to go to current animation and range and just put the animation range mine's only a short one it's 148 frames and then click delete hidden faces then click on export then jump into blender and then I'm going to select all of these here rigify wrinkles physics lighting and everything to import and then I'm going to go to import character and then import said character 
and as you can see the animations have come in on the timeline from here you can then go in and edit the curves editor if you want a full tutorial on how to clean up your mocap in blender it'll be quite a quick one but please let me know in the comments an alternative program to clean up the mocap is iClone. So from Character Creator, just click on the iClone button and that will transfer your character over to iClone. One thing you might notice with your character is that the fingers aren't correct. And the quickest way I found out to fix that is just go to the animation tab, go to the hand tab underneath and just select any hand. And for some reason, this retargets the hands to the correct position. I'm just gonna quickly clean up this mocap. Did is go to the animation layer, select base motion click unlock on the padlock there and that will unlock your curves editor and then go to the filter option and then optimize this tool essentially will remove keyframes from your animation making it less jittery you can increase and decrease the threshold which will show you the optimization of your keys we can now smooth out the curves of our animation just again going to filter and then smooth and then increasing or decreasing the threshold of the smooth rate. You want to now tweak your animation. So just make sure you're on the base motion layer and then go to the edit motion layer button. From here, you can choose the bone you want to move and simply just move it. As you can see here in the video, I'm just going along the timeline and just tweaking the animation like the head rotation and things like that until I'm happy. I want to stop my feet slipping around and to do that, I use the re target modifier. I just go along in the timeline until I get to the point where I want to lock the feet into position and from here I click on create dummy on the foot and this will lock them into position. So when I want to release them I just come along the timeline and then click on the release button in the same panel. So I just go ahead and repeat the process of bringing in my mocap data from Move AI, cleaning it up, and then what I do is save that mocap data to my iClone library, which means I can come back to it and use it on different projects and different characters, which is really handy. To export this character to Unreal Engine, all you need to do is go to File, export and export fbx now i want to export the character without any animation so this will be my skeletal mesh afterwards i'll be exporting out each animation one by one so we just want to make sure your target tool preset is set on unreal and then we're just going to do current frame and come down here and we're just going to make sure delete hidden faces is checked and then just click on export export your character skeletal mesh and just name it whatever you want to name it. What you want to do now is go back and just add in your animation to your character that you want to export. So I'm gonna be exporting all of these separately. So I'm gonna to go to file and export once again, export FBX and just ensure that your range is the range of your animation here and then click on export and export that out as the animation here. We're now gonna import our character and all her animation. So I just start up Unreal Engine and I'm just using a basic blank new project here. However, I do have auto setup already installed on my Unreal project. And as you can see from the example here, it shows you that the shader setup is correct when you have the plugin installed compared to having not the plugin installed. You can grab the plugin from the Real Illusion website for free, as I said, and you can just install it and the installation guide is on their website here. Okay, so let's import our character. So we just go to the content drawer and right click anywhere and create a new folder. I'm just gonna call this C1 underscore character. And this is where I'm gonna be importing all my assets to. And then right click and then from the pop-up menu, select import to and then import my C1 underscore character, which was my base character. And then when prompted, just click on HQ shader, which will give me high quality shading for my character. From the FBX import options, I just ensure that use T0 as ref pose is checked as well as import morph targets is checked. So I'm gonna click on import and as you can see, that's imported all these assets here as well as my shaders. Now we're gonna import each of the animations one by one. And all I need to do again is right click in this folder and click on import, select my FBX that I exported with the animation. From the import settings, now this is where you have gotta concentrate because you need to uncheck import mesh because as I said before, 
we've imported the skeleton mesh already. Next to skeleton, there will be a drop down window. So you just want to ensure that it is selected on the skeleton mesh that we imported just a second ago, because we're gonna now apply all these animations to this one skeleton. Also in your animation layers, just ensure that animated time is selected and that's it. Click on import and you've imported your first animation. Okay, so just repeat that process of bringing in all your animations one by one. We're ready to add everything to our timeline, AKA the sequencer. So if you just go up to the clipboard and click on that and click on add level sequence and just give that a name, this will appear at the bottom of your screen. Go to the content drawer and drag your character's skeletal mesh into the scene. Once it's in the scene, in the outline on the top right, you can just drag that character into your sequencer. In the sequencer, press the plus button, which is your track button, and then from the pop-up, go over to animation and across, and you'll see all your animations for your character stored in here. You can just add them onto your character, which will add them into the sequencer for you to continue. Now I'm going to go a step further and convert my character to a control rig so we can edit the keyframes in here and add animation to our face using our iPhones. You can simply go to the Epic Games Marketplace and download the UECC rigs from here for free. Once everything is installed, find your skeletal mesh for your character in the content drawer. Right click on the skeletal mesh and from the pop-up window select create CC control rig. This will throw you into a rigs folder which is new. From here you'll see your blueprint class drag that blueprint class into our scene and then from the outliner we're going to drag that into our sequencer you want to delete that skeletal mesh that we added in because i've just shown you as an example how to add that we're not going to be using that anymore so just hit delete to add an animation to the cc rig you just press the plus button next to the cc underscore rig underscore BP, go to animation from the pop-up and then you can see all your animations here just like we did before. Now you want to delete the CC underscore body underscore rig and then we're going to re-add that in so just hit delete on the keyboard and then go to the CC underscore rig underscore BP and then right click on this this time and then from the pop-up window uncheck filter assets by skeleton this means we can then see all the control rigs under the bake to control rig select the cc underscore body rig and then click on create that's a little bit of a you've got to trust me there bro but it works and then you can see we have all the keyframes for our characters animation down here if you now want to make changes to your character's animation you can and all you need to do is click on the plus button next to the cc body underscore rig and then select the additive button this will add a new layer and wherever this layer is, you can add additional keyframes over the top of your animation. So you can then move your character's foot or arm or whatever into a new position. And from that key point, it will be set there. So you just press S on the keyboard to set a keyframe within your sequencer. And as you can see in this example here, I'm just adding and modifying the character's position in the animation. Let's now add some facial mocap. So what I like to do is open a separate project and get a meta human and record my facial animation, my singing or my voice acting to this meta human using the Epic Games Face app. I'm gonna shine, supernova, look at the sky, if you're wondering where I got this song from, I actually made it on an AI app called Suno and you can actually make music from here. So it's very quick and easy to use. If you want me to do a tutorial on this, I can, but yeah, that's where I got it from. And so recording is complete. I right click on my face option in the sequencer and then select bake animation sequence. I then right click once again on that face option and then now I click bake to control rig. I go over and select face underscore control board underscore control rig and this will bake the keyframes down to the character's control rig. This, so underneath face, if you find the face control board control rig, right click and then you'll have an option that says export control rig FBX. Just save that and close that project down or you can create more 
more facial animations if you want but we're now going to switch back to our original character and now simply just import that facial animation i'm back into my original project and then in the sequence uh, find cc face rig i right click on there and then from the pop-up go up to import control rig fbx and import that facial animation that we just exported from our meta human and when you import it, just make sure that you're importing it on the correct import start time because it might be a different start time on your other projects. So just make sure that you're doing that right. Click on import and then you can see that your facial animation is applied to your character. So this is a really quick and free way of getting the animation from the message human to your character creator character. So from this point on, you've got your animation, you've got your facial animation, you've got your character in a scene. Remember you can use Quixel bridge to quickly get assets into your scene to build up whatever kind of environment you're creating and there you have it that's how quickly you can put together an animated custom animated character from your iphone i hope you feel inspired by this video to go out and create a world of 3d characters whether that's on tiktok or instagram or whatever you're creating please tag me in social media and of course share this video subscribe and you know the drill i've also got a patron if you want to support this channel Thank you ever so much and that will do it.